1956 series opened in Montreal, in the hockey home of the Canadiens, the Montreal Forum. Ready for action is this Detroit trio that scored 63 goals in league play. Metro Presti on the left, center Alex Delvecchio, who was the league's ninth highest point getter, and Lauren Ferguson obtained from Boston in a mid-season deal. And Detroit coach Jimmy Skinner, practically a hockey stranger when he took over the wings in the fall of 55, now trying for his second straight Stanley Cup. Montreal coach Toe Blake was one of the greatest Canadian of all time, an NHL star for 13 seasons, but a rookie in NHL coaching ranks. Blake looked to goalie Jock Plunk with defenseman Tom Johnson and Jean-Guy Talbot to help make him a Stanley Cup winner in his first season. Tension mounts in the crowded Montreal Forum as the 1956 Stanley Cup final is about to get underway. Center men are Ori Richard of Montreal, Del Vecchio of Detroit, Jack Mellenbach of the referee, and Etienne in the dark sweaters. The 1956 Stanley Cup championship play has started. The Canadiens are the favorites, but for the previous seven years, the National Hockey League had been dominated by Detroit Red Wings, who had finished first in all seven of those seasons and won the Stanley Cup four times. Their payoff men had been Gordie Howe and Ted Lindsay. Red Kelly, a consistent all-star on defense. Bob Goldham, an inspirational leader. For five seasons, the league's most feared netminder in playoff action had been Terry Sawchuk, and before him, Harry Lumley. Now the Red Wings face the Montreal Challenge with Howe and Lindsay still leading their attack, Kelly and Goldham still their key defensemen, and a new brilliant rookie, Glenn Hall, in the nets. Montreal had finished first in regular league play, but every hockey fan wondered whether these challenging Canadiens would be able to overcome the defending champion Red Wings in the intense playoff pressure. The first game was high scoring. Detroit led twice in goals by Del Vecchio and Deneen. Montreal twice tied it on goals by Bellevue and Richard. With eight minutes gone in the second period, it was two all, and the slow motion camera shows the old firm of Lindsay passing to Howe. And Howe, four times NHL scoring champion in five years, returning it, Lindsay scores from right in. The Detroit power play, Howe across to Ferguson. Del Vecchio at the goal mouth, scores, and Detroit has a big 4-2 lead. The teams are in the third period, less than 15 minutes to go. In playoff hockey, a two-goal lead at this stage is considered almost insurmountable. Red Wings have a great chance to win the opening game on Montreal ice. But here's Curry in the corner, Montreal power on the move. Out to Turner, who passes across to Harvey. In to Curry, his rebound. LeClaire scores, and the Detroit lead is cut to 4-3. to three. Less than 14 minutes to play. Red Wings attacking. Talbot intercepts. Up to Jeffrey on. Montreal moving in back to Talbot. Closely checked. Jeffrey on with a backhand shot. And that puck bouncing behind Hall means the hockey game is tied at 4-all. That's two Montreal goals in only 60 seconds. Canadian keep right on driving. Jeffreyon's shot is stopped by Hall. It's in front of Elibo, who scores, and the surging Canadian had scored three goals in two minutes and 11 seconds to lead five to four. As time runs out, Montreal goes on to complete one of the most thrilling comebacks in Stanley Cup history. Ned Yen continue to hold the puck in the Detroit zone. A nightmarish third period for the Red Wings continues. The Montrealers keep them disorganized. And finally, a puck that has bounced around the Detroit corner for nearly half a minute is passed to Floyd Curry, who is checked out of the play. The puck deflects in front of the net, and Povo gets a clinching goal. Scoring four times in the final period, wiping out a 4-2 Detroit lead. Montreal Canadiens win the opening game 6-4. The old Boston Garden was a hockey cathedral, and the old barn on Causeway Street with its rustic, intimate setting provided the Bruins an uncanny home ice advantage. While the garden may have been wrapped in old-school charm, it did not feature the high-tech infrastructure of today's modern rinks. There was no central air conditioning, and when the weather outside got hot, the humidity inside the arena worsened. Such was the case during Game 4 of the 1988 Stanley Cup Final, when the Bruins hosted the defending champion Oilers on a sweltering night. 
Boston trailed three games to none in the series. The weather outside was so hot that during the second period, a transformer inside the garden shut down, cutting the building's electric supply. Complete confusion down on the concourse level as far as the fans are concerned because they have been told to go home, yet they're still lining up for concessions, for beers, and the security people are trying to get them to leave the building. If for any cause beyond the control of the club, a playoff game should be unfinished. Such game shall be replayed in its entirety at the end of the series. The next game, game four, will be played in Edmonton on May 26th. So whatever happened tonight is wiped out? Wiped out. What's your feelings about that? Not Two years later, in game one of the Stanley Cup final, the same teams, the same rink, and the same weather conditions triggered another blackout. And we have got a power failure here at the Boston Garden. Can you believe this? Look at this. The crowd looking on stunned. And there's Mr. Sigler, the president, looking on, and he is saying, I cannot believe this. The problem was fixed, the game was played, and Peter Klima won it for Edmonton in the third overtime, the longest Stanley Cup game ever played. The second game of the Stanley Cup final is underway. The referee is Frank Berry. A Detroit rush. Rookie Johnny Busick leads the attack. Runs into his own teammate, Bill Denny, number 17. And Claude Provo returns for Montreal Canadiens. Lloyd Curry rides Detroit's Bob Goldham into the boards. Curry is penalized, and his trip to the penalty box gives the Detroit Red Wings the man advantage. But hockey breaks sometimes backfire. Watch this Detroit ganging attack. The Red Wing power play led by number 10 Del Vecchio. But the puck is cleared. A break for Montreal's Don Marshall, number 22, who goes the length of the ice right in and scores the opening goal. In the second period, Montreal still leading 1-0. Pavlich's shot is stopped by Jacques Plante. On the return rush, Dickie Moore passing to Henri Richard, who scores to give Montreal a 2-0 lead. Rocket Richard chased into a corner by Bob Goldham. Pass right in front to Dickie Moore, but Hall makes the save. A dangerous Montreal attack. Five men inside the Detroit blue line. A long shot. Another shot and a goal must scramble with Bellybow on the doorstep. The puck is centered again and a good save by Hall. But Detroit fails to clear. It's in front again, and Jeffreyon scores to make it 3-0 for Montreal. Let's watch that goal in slow motion. The play starts with a shot by Olmstead, who worked his way in front. Bellevo is right on top of Hall, kicks at it when he can't shoot. It's finally cleared to the corner by number 16, Norm Ullman, still not out of danger. Olmstead centers the puck to Jeffreyon. He gets away a backhand shot. It's blocked by Hall. Now out again to Turner. His drive is high and bounces into the corner. But here's the persistent Olmstead again. A polo swing sends it accurately out to Jeffreyon, who slides it under Hall's outstretched arm to climax the lengthy, crowd-pleasing scoring play. It's now 3-0 for the powerful Canadian, and they're right back trying to make it four, but Hall saves on a shot from Dickie Moore. Third period, Ted Lindsay trying to break the shutout for Detroit. A pass over to Norm Ullman, who scores for the Red Wings. The 
that almond goal in slow motion as he drives the fast plant. The Red Wings are battling to get back within striking distance. Trailing by two goals, it's everybody up, but Plant saves from Ted Lindsay. Detroit maintains the pressure. Plant stops a shot from the token stick of Woody Howe and blocks another from rookie Norm Olin. And the Montrealers gain possession. It's out to Bert Olmstead, number 15, who drives into the corner. Feeds a perfect pass to Jean Bellyville, who scores to run the count to four to one. Only the camera can slow down the speedy Canadian, showing that Bellyville goal in slow motion. One of 12 goals he scored in the playoffs to tie his teammate Maurice Richard for the NHL playoff record. He scored 47 during the regular season in winning the scoring title and leading the league in goals scored. It's now four to one and late in the game, but Red Wings aren't through. Plant saves from Howe and blocks Lindsay's rebound. And in the final minute, a Montreal breakaway with the littlest rocket. Passing to Moore, out to the biggest rocket, and it's five to one. This smooth play in slow motion shows Henri Richard sliding the puck to Moore, who goes deep into the corner and then sends a perfect pass to Maurice Richard, and that five to one victory gives Montreal a two nothing lead in the series. If you're one of the millions of Americans without dental insurance, ask yourself these three important questions. One, does your company not offer dental insurance? Two, are you self-employed? Three, are you retired? If you answered yes to any of these, it's important that you call Encore Dental today. Encore Dental is real insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. You'll receive up to 100% coverage for preventive care and up to 50% on basic and major procedures. Encore Dental can help keep your teeth healthy, which may prevent infections that lead to heart disease and stroke. And with the high cost of procedures, it makes sense to have great coverage. Choose your level of benefits. There are no claim forms to fill out and no waiting for reimbursement. So go ahead, review it for 30 days. Call 1-800-671-6485. Call now and save an additional 10%. Call now and save an additional 10%. Why don't you just go like that right now? Yeah. Show everybody. Don't do that. From the Red Deer Rebels, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Give it hard! Push, 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 Through the middle, through the middle, through the middle. So many ways to show it. Customize your own at shop.nhl.com. The Red Wing fans look with confidence to their powerful line of left to right. Ted Lindsay, Dutch rival, and Gordy Howe. Rival won the Lady Bing Trophy as the player best combining ability and clean play. Detroit general manager Jack Adams thought so much of rookie netminder Glenn Hall in a daring move. He traded the great Terry Sawchuk to Boston, and Hall won the Calder Trophy as the league's top rookie. But Montreal won awards, too. Here, defenseman Bob Turner on the right talks to Doug Harvey, all-star defenseman for five consecutive years, winner of the James Norris Trophy as the league's best defenseman for 55-56. Coach Toe Blake had a strong bench to go with his all-stars. Young Don Marshall on the left, and on the right, Ab McDonald, just up from St. Catherine's Teepees. So 
the third game is underway. And after 14 minutes of play, with Montreal shorthanded, Red Kelly of the Red Wings carries the puck out of his own zone. Over to Howe. Kelly gets it back. Completes a thrilling end-to-end -end play by driving the puck between Plant's legs to give Detroit the lead. More action in the Montreal zone as the determined Red Wings force the play. Some rough checking between Olmstead and Ribo. It breaks out into a fight. There are no knockdowns as they settle for wrestling and both are penalized after the officials break it up. Playing five aside means more room for Bellybo. Six foot three, 205 pounds, moving in and drills it home to tie the score. The Bellybo magic in slow motion. The big graceful center shifts his way neatly around Goldham and Pronovo, and with remarkable accuracy, his shot is just inside the post. In the second period, Ted Lindsay, number seven for Detroit, fails to score. Rocket Reshore interferes with Howe, and Reshore draws a penalty. Trying to take advantage of it, the potent Gordie Howe, chased to a sharp angle, still forces Plunk to come up with a good save. It's the third period, and the score remains tied. Montreal attacking, but Hall clears. Canadian trying to hold it in the Detroit zone. Arbor checks Bellivo as the Red Wings pay particular attention to the NHL scoring champion. And Pavlich carries out for Detroit. Up the ice with Lindsay. A shot and a rebound to Lindsay who scores to give Detroit the lead. That important Detroit goal in slow motion. There's the Pavlich shot. And Lindsay slaps the rebound between Plant's legs. Detroit now leads 2-1 late in the third period, but they led the first game by two goals and still lost. Gordie Howe, out of his own zone, sweeps wide around Harvey, a perfect shot. Detroit wins 3-1 and cuts Montreal's series lead to two games to one. Watch Howe's skillful play in slow motion. Harvey partially blocks him. Howe's low drive just inside the post. Montreal scored 222 goals during the season's 70 games. Seventh among NHL point getters was Bernie Boom Boom Jeffreyon in the center who scored 29. On the far right, fourth on the NHL list, Bert Olmstead, whose 56 assists set a new all-time record. And on the left, hockey's man of the year, Jean Bellevaux. Winner of the Hart Trophy as the player most valuable to his team. Winner of the Art Ross Trophy as the league's top point getter. 47 goals and 41 assists. The number one all-star center. And in the playoffs, he tied an all-time record. He scored a goal in every playoff game but one. It had been suggested that the daring and acrobatic netminder Jock Plant would be a Montreal weak spot. But when the season ended, he had won the goaltender's Vezina Trophy with an average of only 1.8 goals scored against him per game. Montreal's power was not confined to the big name stars. Left to right, Floyd Curry, 32 points. Ken Mosdell, 30. Jackie LeClaire, 14. And Claude Provo, a rookie who scored three important playoff goals. Game number four. Detroit on their own ice, trying to even up the series before it moves back to Montreal. Canadiens are leading two games to one. The jammed Olympia crowd knows this will be the most important game of the series. Because if Red Wings can't stop that Montreal power on Detroit ice, it will be next to impossible to stop it before the rabid Montreal customers. In a close, tough playoff series, one break can mean a hockey game. Rival NHL coaches have learned that to beat Montreal, you must stop their power play. That means defensive specialists. This game's first break goes against the wings. Metro Pristi, an effective Detroit penalty killer, is hit by a high stick and sidelined for the balance of the series. The ever-dangerous Maurice Reshore on the attack, but hit hard by Bob Golden, who was another NHL veteran to retire following this series. Now watch the two players wearing number 16. 
20-year-old Henri Richard of Montreal and 20-year-old Norm Ullman of Detroit. They collide and start throwing punches as playoff pressure and rough play combine to shorten young tempers. It's still scoreless, and the first goal means so much in playoff hockey. Here it comes. Canadian Burt Olmsted, number 15 in the corner. Out to the blue line, a drive by Harvey, and Bellevaux on the rebound. Scores to give Montreal a 1-0 lead. Second period, Detroit in trouble. Kelly passes to Rival, an important save by Plunk. Keep your eyes on the right skate of Henri Richard, Montreal's number 16. How would you call this one? As the rocket misses, a rebound, and Dickie Moore bats it past Hall. But referee Jack Mellenbacker disallows the goal. The Montrealers protest in force. That action in slow motion. Morris Richard around Bob Goldham. A good shot, but Hall saves. Canadian still on the doorstep. Henri Richard and Moore in close. But the goal is disallowed. The referee ruling Henri Richard's right skate was in the goal crease. Well, what do you think? The controversial decision did not affect the outcome. Montreal's hard-shooting Bernie Jeffreyon leads the rush. A shot by Olmsted and on the rebound, Bellevue gets the most important goal of the series as it sends Canadian into a commanding 2-0 lead. From here on, it's the story of a new hockey champion being crowned. Some hockey strategists say you should stick to defensive hockey in the playoffs, but not Canadian, even when they're in the lead. Continuing the attack in the third period, Claude Provo to Curry, and his goal makes it 3-0. Slow motion shows how Provo passes neatly around Bob Goldham, and Curry scores just before being checked heavily by Gordy Howe, a check that was certainly not too little, but decidedly too late. Anytime a hockey team wins a game, particularly a playoff game on the opponent's ice, it's a major accomplishment. To win by a shutout is remarkable. Final score, Montreal 3, Detroit nothing. You never know when, but thieves can steal your identity. You know, I can save you 15% today if you open up a charge card account with us. You just read my mind. Just one piece of information, and they can steal your credit and ruin your reputation. You need LifeLock. Relentlessly protecting your personal information to help stop the crooks before your identity is stolen. Credit monitoring only tells you after you've been attacked. But LifeLock's advanced ID alert system directly notifies you, protecting your identity before you become a victim. No one can stop all identity theft. That's why you need the security of our $1 million service guarantee. Call now to try LifeLock risk-free for a full six. 60 days. If you're not completely satisfied, you won't pay a cent. Act now and get this document shredder at $29 value free. Call 1-800-852-1982 to try LifeLock risk-free for a full 60 days. Use promo code NORISK, plus get your free document shredder. Call 1-800-852-1982 now. LifeLock service guarantee cannot be offered to residents of New York. You can choose what games you want to watch. Pick from your favorite milestones, most memorable moments, late game heroics, and more. Vote now at NHL.com slash fan vote and tune in Saturdays to see the top five results. And the puck is faced. Montreal just one game away from the prize Stanley Cup. The defending champion Detroit Red Wings facing elimination. One of the game's fiercest competitors, Ted Lindsay, a Detroit spark plug for the past 12 season, gets a good shot on Plunk. And at the other end of the ice, Morris Richard to Harvey, and Hall turns it aside. Two rockets are better than one. The Richard brother act, pocket rocket to brother rocket, in the save by Hall. Playoff pressure is greatest on the netminders, even when they're sitting down on the job. This second period save by Plunt may have changed the course of this hockey game, as Ted Lindsay has an excellent scoring chance, a hard shot, but Plunt's save maintains the scoreless deadlock. A 
Another important play that turned the hockey tide. A rush by Turner. Reshore pulled down by Pronovo, who gets a penalty. This is what Montreal, players and fans alike, has been waiting for. The five strong force of their power play. Harvey to Curry to Valleyball, who scores his 12th playoff goal. See it in slow motion. Curry's perfect pass. Bellybow's perfect shot. Montreal has that first goal, but Detroit's cause is still not lost, and Hall saves off Jeffrey Aw. Canadian driving for the clincher. Pronovo still in the penalty box. Five Montrealers close in. A backhand shot by Jeffrey on. Hall saves that one, but it's still not cleared. A scramble for the puck. Reshore and Valleybo both in front. The Rocket gains control, gets a shot, and scores another power play goal. It's the third period now. Montreal less than 20 minutes away from the world's title. Valibo attacking with Jeffrey on, who scores on the rebound, and now it's 3 0. But there's no such word as quit in the hard driving play of the National Hockey League. Detroit's number 10, Alex Del Vecchio, with a powerful burst of speed in the score for the Red Wings. In slow motion, watch Del Vecchio's bullet shot as it sails in, just missing the outstretched glove of Jock Plant. Even with a 3-1 to one lead and the Stanley Cup minutes away, the Montreal Canadiens continue to attack right to the final seconds of the 1955-56 season. Gordie Howe drives in for the desperate wings and Plant saves. Red Wings, their title slipping away, still fighting. Ted Lindsay gets a Detroit breakaway, but again is stopped by Jock Plant. Three seconds to go. The final play of the 1956 Stanley Cup Championship. Montreal Canadiens are the hockey champions of the world. The players from two of the finest teams in history shake hands. For Montreal, the season ends in jubilation. But 1955-56 provided 225 games of the finest in sports excitement in Detroit, Toronto, Boston, Chicago, and New York, as well as in Montreal. So ends the 1956 final. But in a new season, the six teams will once again present thrills, speed and excitement, and the ultimate in hockey skill in another quest for that historic and famous sports prize, Hockey Stanley Cup.